Hey, coming to you from the Building Science Summer Camp. This is the Westford Symposium on Building Science held every year. This is the 20th year, and one of my buddies, John, who, how many years have you gone now, John? That's my third year, Matt. Okay, so I've just barely been here longer than you. This is my fifth year. Um, John, I know that you are a, a crack uh, HVAC designer and also a building science consultant, and specifically, my buddy, Christoph Irwin, who's also your friend, yeah. told me I needed to pull you aside today and ask you a couple questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> so first off, John, uh, Christoph and I are giving a seminar on hot topics in building science. What are the things that are top of your mind, even after you've heard the last two days worth of uh, speakers? What are the kind of hot two or three things that you're thinking about in building science? Uh, I mean, for me, the things that we're really trying to push on on our high performance homes uh, that were um, that we haven't pushed as hard on yet is uh, is really indoor air quality. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, just really trying to reframe what we do as you know not just saving energy. Yeah. And and uh, what we do is you know we are improving comfort, indoor air quality, durability, and on top of that, we're saving a whole bunch of, of energy. I like it. You know, that brings up another side question. I've had a couple of clients recently who have come to me and said, hey, Matt, I really want to build a mold-free house, a house that I know is not going to have any mold when I move in and is not going to develop any. Can you think of a couple things that I should be thinking about as a builder uh, when it comes to building that style house? <laughs> Flashing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the uh, I don't know. if It's not scientific, but what I tell people is uh, maybe... Uh, 99% of moisture problems in buildings are from bulk water, either rainwater or groundwater, which is just rainwater that is now in the ground. And so you deal with that and you're solving most of the moisture issues. You're a one percenter at that point, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, so if we solve the bulk water, which was a lot of what we talked about today, frankly, yeah. was keeping moisture out of our buildings, would you use standard construction methods, assuming you flash everything correctly and perfectly, knowing that you had a client who was super sensitive? Standard construction methods, I'm not sure. It would Meaning, let's say, would you use stud construction with standard sheetrock, things uh, like that? Yeah, I guess it depends on the client. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not... I don't think the science is up to speed on on super sensitive clients, and I'm not equipped necessarily to be able to offer you know solutions that I know are going to work. Yeah. And that's I want you know solutions that I'm proposing to clients. I want to know that they're going to work. They got to be bomber. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For sure. All right. So let's switch gears. Let me throw something in your wheelhouse right. then. So uh, you know what? Actually, you need to slide over a little bit, brother. You're uh, you're slightly off Sorry. camera, and that's okay. That's all right. John, um, on the HVAC world, what's a what's a big hot topic for you when it comes to HVAC design these days? Oh, I guess I mean for me, my uh, bread and butter in terms of HVAC design is ducted mini split heat pumps, ducted, not ductless ones. Nice. Uh, so we're getting the benefits of variable speed compressors, small units that are appropriately sized for the loads. Uh, they're not really that expensive, and the efficiency is fantastic. Uh, so it's awesome. Yeah, it is. So then um, when you talk about efficiency, those units, you know, the standard public is talking about SEER ratings. And if you look at the SEER numbers, they're good, but they're not stratospheric. Do you think those SEER ratings really uh, correlate well to actual to actual energy savings or efficiency in the field? Uh, certainly on the on the ducted systems that, that I'm designing and, and testing, you know, commissioning, uh, I think they do correlate well. Okay. Uh, I think the, you know, the real world efficiency on the ductless units I think that's much more up for debate Interesting. yeah there have been a few research uh, reports that have come out recently that have definitely made some people's uh, hair blow back I guess and, and so in what way meaning they're a lot more efficient than what the ratings show or not as efficient uh, less efficient than the ratings show Interesting. yeah so we got a Volkswagen situation going here uh, I don't yeah I don't I'm, I'm not gonna go that far because yeah. <laughs> no um, but I think that there are, and it, uh, I think if you follow, you know, best practices for installing the Walmart units, then you can get, you know, great efficiency that, you know, approach what their lab testing shows. But I think a lot of the installs, uh, you know, the Walmart units are too tight to the ceiling or the louvers aren't set in the right position, you know, things like that. But, you know. 
So I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. John, if you're, um, if you're building a, let's say, a 3,000 square foot house in Virginia, which is where you're designing, walk me through what an ideal, like a killer setup is for an HVAC system. Oh, sure. So, yeah, 3,000 square feet, that's going to be a, a pair of ducted heat pumps uh, with an independently ducted ERV. Nice. And that's it. And, uh, and uh, let's say if it's a two-story house, you do one on the first and one on the second? Yes, exactly. And uh, and what brands are you liking these days among uh, both both the uh, HVAC equipment and the ERVs? Uh, so for me, I'm using pretty much exclusively the Fujitsu ducted heat pumps. Uh, I'd love to also spec other brands too, but they, their equipment isn't up to speed yet. Interesting. Yeah, the Fujitsu equipment is, is really quite nice. Yeah. 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 How about on the ERV side? On the ERV side, I've been using a lot of Renew Air units, uh, so especially the EV90 and EV90P, which is it's a great workhorse model for most of the house sizes and number of people that I work with. Um, it's, uh, it's efficient. It's cost effective it's simple yeah. it's simple which i really love uh yeah in terms of the ventilation system design and then how about um how about filtration what are you doing for filtration in your houses um what merv do you recommend people use and then uh what do you think about adding uv lights and other things to uh, kind of go above just pulling things out of the air so yeah in terms of filtration um i on the heat pump systems i'm using merv 13 filters uh at the filter grill okay um so that's that's our starting place we can go higher and we've had a couple of clients who you know specifically request to go higher we just have to you know design it properly we're using uh, significantly you know oversized filters mm -hmm. to really decrease the pressure drop and make sure that we're not uh, spending a bunch of energy to get the good filtration so we're using very little energy and getting the great filtration uh, in terms of UV lights I don't know I'm, I've been researching that recently and I haven't totally made up my mind I I kind of feel like maybe it's overkill for for most clients uh, to do that uh, Unless maybe you have a really sensitive client or you have somebody that's on top of their list is that they need that for a specific reason. Right. I mean, there might be specific clients who have specific, you know, medical issues that, yeah, where it makes sense. But I think for most people, it's probably going a little bit overboard. Yeah. So most people, you're going to say, let's put a MERV 13 and change that thing once a year and you've got phenomenal filtration, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. No, we'll probably change it, you know, two or three times a year. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the, the, um, the ducted mini spits seem to be, in, I guess in my experience, a little bit more sensitive to uh, uh, pressure drop. So as the filter gets loaded up, it becomes, you know, it's not a big pressure drop when it's clean. Mm -hmm. And as it gets loaded, it becomes a significant pressure drop and you start to drop the airflow. Uh, and get outside your optimum. In the summer, it's not a problem. We just are not a big problem. We're just removing more moisture. But right. in the winter, we would rather actually move a little bit more air, which gives us a little boost in capacity and uh, in efficiency. That's awesome. John, any other hot topics in building science that you've been thinking about that we didn't talk about yet? Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, I guess indoor air quality is the thing that I've been personally focusing on most. So I've been uh, doing a lot of of, uh, you know, reading uh, of, you know, other people's work, research articles, watching presentations from, you know, people like we've listened to today and yeah. other stuff like that. So that's the thing I, I feel like uh, is missing from, from my toolkit. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, really trying to get up to speed on it. Then I got one more for you on the hot topic side. You know, I feel like in Austin, we uh, are hearing a lot about spray foam and there are people that are saying, look, I don't want spray foam in my house uh, for various reasons. Maybe they read some horror story in the internet. What's your take on all that? Uh, I mean, yeah, spray foam, there's, there's definitely a time and place to use spray foam. Most of my really high performance jobs, I guess with spray foam, then one of the selling points is the air tightness, mm -hmm. but we achieve uh, better air tightness through different methods. So if we're doing that already, usually through airtight sheathing approaches, uh, then, then why would we spend extra money on spray foam? Right.
Yeah. Not necessary at that right. point. Right. Right. So then we use something that's uh, uh, you know less expensive, more environmentally benign. That's usually cellulose. That's great. Yeah. Are you guys in Virginia doing condition attic spaces and running ductwork up there, or not necessarily? Uh, on some projects, yeah, but more often I prefer uh, a drop ceiling or a raised soffit truss. So we get a raised area within the attic truss oh, for the ductwork. Nice. Yeah. So it's a very compact, especially with the ducted mini splits. When the loads are really low and your airflow is really, you know, low, mm -hmm. then it makes the ductwork layout much simpler. Oh, man, so nice. you get the nice synergies going there. And with that drop soffit, how are you getting access to that equipment typically? Oh, usually with the drop soffit or the Ray soffit truss, we'll have a mechanical room. Uh, that's one of the great things about the Fujitsu air handler. It can be an upflow or horizontal discharge that's air nice. handler. So in those cases, we put it in a mechanical closet on the second floor with vertical discharge up into that uh, area for supply distribution. And what kind of tonnage can you get on a, on a uh, Fujitsu mini split uh, uh, with forced air? I mean, on their kind of standard residential series up to ton and a half. So it's three quarter, one ton, and ton and a half. Yeah. We almost never use the ton and a half. It's almost always the three quarter ton and the one ton units. And how big is a one ton Fuji Fujitsu unit? How many CFM are you roughly getting out of that? Uh, in terms of the air handler size, uh -huh. four pizza boxes. Four pizza boxes stacked four up. Pretty much. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's 20 Tight. By 28 by 24 by eight. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's tiny. Yeah. That's really yeah, tiny. With a, a pair, pair of pants plenum, Something. dropping air one way and, and another. And how many CFM are you pushing out of that thing? Uh, up to f uh, in the low 400s on the one ton model, 300 to 350 on the three quarter ton model. That's awesome. Yeah. How quiet are those units? Uh, they're not the quietest. So that's one of the issues when uh, you have a small mechanical room and a very short return section. Uh, so where possible, I try to extend the return a little bit, use a little bit of insulated flex duct to mitigate noise from the, uh, the fan motors inside the air handler. Yeah, that makes sense. John, thank you so much, man. Anything else that you wanted to uh, mention on the video today? No, I think that's it. Thanks, man. John, well, thank you for uh, being on camera with me, man. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thanks. Keep up the great work in Virginia. And if people want to look you up, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, think little. Yeah, they can just uh, think-little.com. Think-little.com. Right, that's right. John, we'll see you at the 21st Symposium for Building Science next year. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks, Matt.